Hello everyone, this is Kara. You asked and I am delivering. I'm going to do a brief talk today about um, fireworks, but also about anxious dogs and pets, cats, rabbits, gerbils in general, um, with tips that should be able to help you manage the upcoming 4th of July. I want to first note that I do have one spot left in my body work class, which is coming here on July 8th and 9th and 15th and 16th. You'll spend four to five hours with me or watch the replay on each of those weekend days. And for your anxious animals, that is truly one of the best methodologies that you can use is to learn deep myofascial and uh, neurofascial release strategies to be actually removing physical stress from your animal that may be built up because of natural genetic anxiety. If you want in, you need to email me or let me know somehow and we will talk about it. The cost is $325. Yeah, I am a certified teacher trainer with Web Bodywork for Pets by Dr. Edward Basingthwaite. He is well known around the world. If you bought it from him directly, it would be over $1,000. With me, it's $325 for more than 20 hours of instruction and a full year to access another live stream if you didn't get it the first time. Uh, workbooks, lots of help. And if you want to become a practitioner, you can do that. All right. On to our talk about fireworks and loud sounds in general. I have an anxious dog. I have one anxious dog out of three who does not like fireworks, okay? And it has gotten a little bit worse as she's gotten a little older. She's 12 and a half. But Liberty's interesting fireworks story doesn't start there. Now, Liberty is the dog you see most often with me in uh, most of my promotional imagery, the red one. I got her, I fostered her on the 3rd of July because I was doing free social media for a nonprofit and there was a bulletin that went out, a social media bulletin saying these 12 dogs are going to be euthanized in the next two hours at my local municipal shelter due to space for all of the basically unsaid dum-dums who leave their dogs at home and go off to a 4th of July place but put them in the backyard and then don't expect them to jump a five foot fence but they're gone and the m local shelter has to kill whoever they have in the shelter at that time in order to make space for all of your pets who get lost i'm not blaming any of you individually but i am saying if you're the type of person who has a big experience on fourth of july let's talk about how we can keep your animals safe even if you don't think that they're ones who are actually afraid of fireworks because especially when owners are gone or there's a lot of people at a home or you're at a park and you've got them on a leash you can have an animal that you thought was fine last year with fireworks and then this year is not the year so my primary thing that i want you to think about is number one if you're going to leave your animal at home do not leave them at home um in your backyard with free access to the total patio or yard. You need to find a quieter inside space, preferably a crate if they won't eat through it, cover the crate up uh, over with a blanket and know that they are safe. If they are left inside your house and they're uh, and they get nervous, even if they've never been nervous before, I have seen pictures of dogs literally clawing their way throwing themselves through a sliding glass door and the owners come home to a nightmare okay and probably a dead dog so please keep your animals safe if you are leaving them number one uh, the second thing i would say about animals whether or not you are leaving them at home or you have an animal that usually does fine with fireworks but you're going to a proud crowded place and you're taking them with you um, I really love the Tractive device. You've seen me talk about it on here before if you've been a longtime member of this clan. Um, or an AirTag at the very least. What I don't like about AirTags is that they can only go so far and if your animal runs off into more of a rural area where there's not iPhones near them, you may not find them. But they can still work. They're still much better than nothing. 
Um, but Tractive is a GPS device, and although it does need to be charged every couple of days, I have two Tractives on animals who go in and out, and I never don't know where they are. And if it's at night and you can't find them, that you will get guided on your phone to go toward them. And when you're within 200 feet, you can press a light and a sound activator and it will show you where your animal is. You'll hear it ringing off of their collar. A really a fantastic device. And that's good whether or not your animal is anxious or not. If you go hiking, you should use something like that so your dog is never lost from you or your cat is never lost from you if you hike with your cat. Those are my two top suggestions. Number one, don't leave your animal at home unattended. And if you do, make sure they're safe and they're away from glass doors and don't put them outside in the backyard while you go off. Because there are thousands of dogs in one week, thousands nationally, who will go missing from their yards and you will never see them again. Okay? Um, and a lot of them will die in municipal shelters up to five miles away because people don't think they could be there, right? So let's not do that. Crowders are, shelters are terribly overcrowded. Now, for those of you who are very careful and solicitous of your animals naturally and you already know that they are anxious and you may be providing a way to stay home with them, you're deciding you're going to stay home, um, I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying if you know that you, you're going to stay home, here are some things I believe you can do. You can, number one, talk to your vet about whether or not, uh, um, based on your own dog's medical history, this is not medical advice, this is what my vet has told me. Depending on the size of your dog and their medical history and what other medications they're on or if they don't have any kind of breathing problems or like a really short neck, you know, some of them can take a small, small, small dosage per year vet of melatonin and some vets have something called Nutricalm that they can give you. Um, my vet has recommended a combination of Nutricalm and melatonin to me at a very low dosage, but I don't have like a a dog with a face that's pushed in, right? And she doesn't have any heart problems. That's one way to like help them start to relax. Rescue Remedy is a, um, a tincture that's very helpful to many. Some people find good results with CBD. I personally, it doesn't work on my dog, but that doesn't mean it, it couldn't work on yours. You don't want to overload too many substances on your animal, but Talk with your vet and choose what you think will work. Um, and if you don't have a tractive device, I highly recommend it for your animal as well. Um, now let's talk about Thunder Shirts. Thunder Shirts work for my animals. Do they work 100%? Do I have a totally calm and confident dog in my house? No, but I have a much calmer dog when she's got her Thunder Shirt on. I recommend that if you don't have a Thunder Shirt yet and you don't have experience using it, you get one now. Lots of people are selling them on Facebook Marketplace secondhand. You don't necessarily need to buy it brand new. And start getting you, your dog used to wearing it now. Um, and make sure that it's on at the appropriate level. It's tight enough because what we're trying to do is activate the parasympathetic nervous system so that things calm down. Animals who are crying a lot, animals who are barking, animals who are shivering or shaking, their sympathetic nervous system is very activated, that fight or flight mentality, okay? But when you activate the parasympathetic nervous system, you're actually creating pressure on the nerves and the tissue and the and the fascia and you're regulating that nervous system so that they can calm down can't get a thunder shirt haven't found if it works well then consider doing some true deep massage work on your animal instead of just petting look into massage techniques i've been doing free workshops on that for two months now um you and that is the class that we're going to do july 8th but think about petting your animal without just a light petting or a fast petting, petting them very slowly and in a relaxed fashion, like almost so slowly you can barely feel it. Finally, I would tell you, I don't want you to tell your animal that it's okay. It's not okay that people are putting off 
sometimes illegal fireworks. Uh, my house almost had its roof lit on fire two years ago. And my husband, who is the nicest, most diplomatic man you have ever met, was like out of his house like a shot and telling the people next door, like, dude, you burn my house down. We're going to have a serious problem. So I, I don't want you to tell your animal it's okay because when we tell our animal it's okay, it makes them think that their state of being, their panic is hugely justified and you're just as worried as they are. You are going to be worried. When you see an animal shivering, shaking, having their heart palpate out of their chest, you are worried. I know this is a big ask, but I need you to stay relatively calm and I need you to touch them in a calm way, distract them, take them as far away as you can from the loud sounds. Um, there usually is one room in your house where they feel safest or that's more away from the noise. Do that and then that will help, okay? And then I'm going to just do now a little EFT practice for you that may help you if you want to play this during the fireworks if you're having a rough time. It works best if you work with me, but this is your free experience of it, okay? Let's say the fireworks are happening, right? And uh, you're afraid of those fireworks and you're afraid your animal is worried about the fireworks. Before the fireworks start, you can do a brief, what's called emotional freedom technique, tapping on yourself. Um, emotional freedom technique is based on a little bit of cognitive behavioral therapy <clears throat> and and like thinking and talking out loud about the things that worry you and bother you about the issue combined with tapping on some uh, traditional Chinese um, medicine points for fear, grief, anxiety, anger, frustration. Okay, you don't need to know what all of them are. I'm just going to walk you through it. So we're going to do a quick fix for yourself to get you pretty settled and then we're going to work on the animal right so we're going to set the problem you want to put your non-dominant hand out palm up for me that's my right hand so it's going to maybe be opposite for you we're going to karate chop the side of the hand where there is a, an acupressure point here and you're going to say even though i am really afraid for fido or for Sassy the kitty or the rabbit at this time because she's always been afraid of fireworks. I love and accept myself. Even though I'm afraid she's going to hurt herself during the fireworks or she's going to have a heart attack and die, I love and accept myself. Even though, now if you're going to a party and you're feeling a bit afraid because you're going to leave the house, this could be something you would say, please substitute with whatever's right for you. Even though I'm really afraid to go over to the Stewarts for the 4th of July and have something happen to her, um, I love and accept myself and I honor the choices I'm making. Then you're going to go in the inner eye and you can do this with both hands. I just do it with one, but you can do it with both hands. And you're going to take the first two fingers of your hand and you're going to tap on the inner eye and you're going to make a statement. Every statement kind of agitates the problem right now. I call it the washing machine method, okay? You're going to go tap, tap, tap. I really hate fireworks. These people are putting off illegal fireworks and I'm afraid my dog is going to have a heart attack. And if I lost my animal during a firework situation, I would feel terrible. If she got lost because I left her outside, I would be horrified. If this year goes as badly as last year and she's making a mess everywhere or she's shaking for hours, it will be such a stressful day for me. And I don't know what to do. I really can't make the sound any less in this house. It's just so close around us. It's always a problem. I, I'm i so afraid for her. And I've seen those videos of dogs dying during, far, hard, uh, during fireworks. I don't want my dog to die. I don't want my cat to die. I don't want her to hide under the bed. It's such a terrifying experience. Why do people have to put off such loud fireworks? Can't we all have silent fireworks? This is terrible. I'm so scared. <sighs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do because I don't know how to protect her, but also we are having family that we want to have over. This is just a rough situation. How am I going to make her feel better? And I want her heart to not beat so fast. 
it may be really bad. And now you see I'm going to move. I've sighed a few times and you have to wait until you sigh or you feel a release in your body. If you don't feel those releases, you want to keep making up sentences about or repeating sentences about how afraid you are for your animal. Then in my last round, I'm going to say, but you know what? I have some solutions this year. I'm going to tap on my dog before the fireworks start, like Kara taught me. I'm going to tap on myself. I'm also going to get a thunder shirt, and I'm going to have her wear it right now. Uh, if I have to be gone, I'm going to have a tractive device, so I'll always know where she is in case she gets out. I'm not going to leave my dog where she can get close to glass and hurt herself. I'm going to put her in a nice quiet room with door closed and or I'm going to put her in her crate which she already loves with a great yummy long time to take apart treat. Maybe she'll eat it, maybe she won't, but if she eats that peanut butter or she eats whatever it is in there, the melted cheese, it will distract her for a while. I'm going to get that thunder shirt. I have some stuff from my vet who he that he approved or she approved and now I feel like I have a strategy. I can do some body work. I can do some massaging. I'm not going to tell her it's okay, but I'm going to remain calm and not freak out about the fireworks myself. If I model calm, that will help my animal. And I'm going to touch her body very deliberately and seriously. I'm going to use all the tools available to me. And we're going to get through this because we've gotten through it before. We'll get through it now. Okay, so that would be a very shortened version of it. You could do that for up to 30 minutes. Okay, so it doesn't have to be short, but for purposes of this video, I'm doing it rather fast. Now I'm going to pretend that I have my dog. Okay, now I could do this on the dog itself, right? I can tap on the dog, but if the dog will not tolerate the tapping on the the same points that we have for humans, then I could do two things. Number one, I could tap from the top of the head and then down for every statement, down every vertebrae of his body. Um, or I could just tap on myself as a surrogate for my animal. So I'm going to do that now, but you could do it on your dog, okay, or your cat. Most cats really don't like it. You have to do it from afar, but some will, will tolerate it. Okay, now you pretend as though you are the dog, okay? I can help you with this book a session if you want to go through it, but if you don't, this is what you would do. Say, even though I'm terrified of fireworks, I love and accept myself. Even though every day I start, every firework and loud sound I hear, I start pacing manically and I start to shake and sweat and get so scared and I'm panting and it really worries my mom. I love and accept myself. Even though I can't believe they keep having fireworks and I'm already hearing them pop off. Even right now, tonight they pop off and it scares me so bad. I honor the choices I'm making. I, if I'm, if I'm Liberty, I know that Liberty went to the shelter during the 4th of July season and probably heard them for several days before she was picked up. She was never put up for adoption, by the way. She was just captured on the street on the 1st of July and they put her in the back because she almost bit a vet and they said she's not adoptable. She was six months old. She never bit anybody ever, ever once I got her. But because they knew there would be hundreds of other escaped dogs and she, she bothered to nip someone when they pulled her in from the street or try to nip someone to protect herself, she was deemed un unadoptable. So let's keep those dogs out of the shelter and let's, let's keep our dogs at home. I am scared. I'm always scared on 4th of July. I've already started to get scared at 8 or 9 o'clock at night. The dum-dums next door always put off a firework. You know, woohoo, America, America, you know, and then I feel crazy and everyone in my house is watching me to make sure that I'm not panting too hard, but it sends something off, a deep fear that I'm going to be shot or killed. I feel like the boom is coming for me. I don't realize that it's just going up in the air. It's hard. My mom tells me it's just going up in the air, but it doesn't feel like that. It feels like it's going to reverberate through my body it does reverberate through my body and then I'm panting and I'm in fear for my life and I can't control it I am so afraid and then I feel like a chicken because I didn't used to be this afraid when I was younger but now it really amps me up 
I'm so worried. I get so scared. And you can do this tapping right during the fireworks while it's happening. Even though you think your words aren't right, you don't have it figured out, you're not sure what I'm doing, but tapping in these spots, inner eye, outer eye, under eye, under nose, and on a dog it would be on the nose, right? Under lip, uh, collarbone, out well, here is grief, but here is stress, right? Right here, and for a dog that's gonna, or a cat, it's gonna be kind of closer to their little shoulder joint. That alone is releasing stress for your animal, okay? It's releasing stress for you to do that. I don't know if it's going to be okay. I'm afraid they're going to have to take me to the hospital. I don't want to be left alone. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I'm actually doing this for Liberty now because I don't want our 4th of July to be tough. I'm scared. How can I not be scared? But mom talked to the vet and got me what I need to more relax. I'm going to be more relaxed than I normally would. And she's going to turn my hearing aids down the day that of the 4th of July. So I'm not as sensitive to sound on that day. And she's also going to put my thunder shirt on. And part of the time, Liam's going to be here and will take care of me. So I don't have to worry. I'm not going to be alone. <clears throat> and no one's going to let me go through a door. And if I get to panting very much too hard, there's always the emergency bet. But I'm going to be better than that. I'm going to do fine. I'm going to do just fine. I am okay. I've been okay every other 4th of July. I will be okay now. I will be okay now. So that's an example for you. There are no rights and wrongs exactly. I can't tell you how many times you tap. You have to start to learn your own initiative, your own um, intuitive feelings about that. And that's not something I usually would teach in five, 10 minutes, but I want to give you some tools for that and hope that it helps you. So to recap, you're going to watch where your animals are during 4th of July. If they for some reason have to be outside supervised or unsupervised, you are going to get an air tag or attractive or some other device to track them if they get away from you. Um, you're not going to let an animal be alone unsupervised near any kind of glass door that they could go through or a window. You are going to try to create a calm environment in whatever way you can, whether or not you are home or not. You're going to look into whether your vet would approve you getting some sort of relaxing, um, natural, or perhaps depending on the state of your animal, less than natural supplement or uh, medication that would help you get through this rough night should you need it. Considering a thunder shirt, and it, not a thunder shirt, at least getting some good body work on your animal, right? So that they feel like they are taken care of and they're not just petted. And remember, when we pet really fast, we're actually agitating our animal. If we pet very slowly, we're inducing calm, okay? So when you're petting, you don't want to go frenetic. You want to really long and slow, okay? And then you're going to talk to your animal as though they are a grown-up, and you're going to tell them that they're doing better than you expected. You're going to apologize to them for the fact that they have to go through this, but you're not going to go, poor baby, poor baby, oh, 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 because that is you being anxious and transferring that anxiety to your animal. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. And... Um, if you have any questions about this, please do drop them in the comments. And if you want to take the body work class with me uh, in, on July 8th and 9th and 15th and 16th, also drop a comment or send me a DM. Thank you. Happy 4th of July. Bye.